Uh, first of all, happy Halloween uh, to all the trick-or-treaters out there, all the kids that are going to go out tomorrow. Uh, hopefully uh, you have a safe Halloween. Number two, just want to uh, send our, our, our thoughts to uh, Kirk Cousins and, and uh, his recovery and wish him a speedy recovery as well. Had a chance to talk to him yesterday and, and uh, hope everything's okay with him and, and uh, his recovery goes really well. So with that, uh, we'll start and open up with questions. Jay, you talked, uh, speaking of your quarterback, you talked about incremental improvements that you've seen from yeah. him. How would you kind of elaborate on, on what you've seen him? Well, again, this, this team is, we've got some players who have played a lot of football on this football team. Then we have some guys who haven't played a ton of football in the starting roles that they have. And I just think his confidence is, 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 is building within each aspect of the quarterback position. And I think that's where it's not just playing the quarterback position. There's so many aspects of playing the quarterback position, um, whether it's the proper ball flight, uh, the appropriate throw, location of a ball, um, you know, the pocket movement, to the accuracy, uh, to the leadership piece of that, to, uh, you know, different types of throws. I can go on and on. I mean, I just see more confidence in him building the more he plays. It's not always going to be perfect, but as he continues to get better, um, um, you know, uh, he's, he's doing those things better than he did at the beginning of the year, uh, all of it. And you can see this, uh, this presence starting to form with him uh, that I think encompasses all the things we just kind of hit on there. But the complete quarterback is what you obviously want. Um, you know, and that's the ultimate objective, not perfection, but the ultimate quarterback and being good at every aspect that makes a quarterback really good. So he's working on it every single day and I'm proud of the progress he's making and we as a whole offense have to continue to support him and uh, make the plays presented. This stands out to you about your defensive line right now. Yeah, I think they're playing really well together. I think they're playing really hard. Um, I think they've gotten better um, just with the, the fundamentals and techniques. I think the bye week was really good for us to go back and work on a lot of the, the stuff that Coach Winston teaches. And, you know, they're building a lot of confidence and gaining a lot of confidence. And we go back to the beginning of the year. We're talking about this word poise. But, you know, a lot of you were asking me coming off the Iowa game, you know, are you worried about this team, you know, um, you know, thinking they've got it figured out. No, we need this team to think they, you know, th that they can do it all the time. You need to push that confidence forward. Um, but also, they've already been humbled, so you know that. But you got to get this team to be really confident. And I think you watch a defensive line that's playing at a high level and playing confident and understanding them and how they work within the system. And I think beginning of the year, especially with some of the inexperience that we had, it's not only just not doing your job, probably the best you could do it, but to trying to do somebody else's job. And what happens when you try to do that and what happens? So um, just see them really coming together. Uh, they're a fun group to be around. They really are. Um, you know, they work their tail ends off. And, and, and Coach Winston deserves a lot of credit for that because he pulls that out of them every single day, and they want to give that every single day. You moved Jordan Newman over to running back. Do you have a list of players that you look at as possible flip over from side to side? Yeah, I mean, Tyler Newman came here as a corner a few days, and then he went over to safety. Uh, so we do that at times. Uh, you're really only doing that. You're only making a change if it's going to be some type of permanent change, uh, unless there is a massive, uh, there's a massive depth problem with injury. Then you can have, move somebody for a little bit of time because that stunts their growth and what they're doing. And every day counts in development. Um, we do that here and there. But I think it was you know last year. I think it was 2021, two years ago. We actually took Joe Joe and moved him when we had that running back. Um, you know, it seemed like every week we were losing a running back. So, um, but he came in as a safety. And even when we moved him in 21, we still wanted him doing some safety as well because we didn't know where he was actually going to be. But you can just see when somebody takes advantage of their opportunity what it looks like. But those are some of the things and decisions you have to make. And you got to talk to the players about it and why you're doing it. But you're never going to just move a player just to move a player. You're moving a player to a certain position thinking that that's the best thing for them now and the best thing for their, their future. And that's what's hard about making that decision. You're not only making it just for the, the University of Minnesota, does it fit what they're going to be able to do if they have a chance at the next level too. PJ, what's it like just to be in a four-way tie at the West with four games to go knowing you have some control over the last month here? Yeah, it really doesn't matter. Uh, it really doesn't. I mean, uh, you got to take it one game at a time and you got to take it one game championship seasons because – when you get to November, I mean, the people that don't win in November don't have a chance. And so, I mean, we're all at a point where every game matters, and that's what we told our, our team yesterday. We've made it to November where it matters. 
Now, what we do with that is up to us. So, one game championship seasons, the only thing on our mind is Illinois, period. Um, this team's done a really good job of being able to do that. Um, and so they need to continue to do that because this team we're going to play is really, really good. And uh, they know that. Uh, we haven't beaten them the last few years, so uh, we know that. Speaking of position changes with Zaquan Bryan going to running back, is that is that permanent or is that no, just? That, that's a, you know, answering you know, Randy's question a little bit. That's, that's not permanent, um, but it's something that I'm, I, I don't feel like I'm going to ever get to him this year right, at the position that he plays. So if I can move him, I mean, the hope would be that he he doesn't play at that position, at running back. But if we get to him, he has to be ready to play. Because you're always thinking, you have to think worst case scenario. This is about response. This is about proactiveness. This is about, it's not about reacting. All of a sudden you get to him, I'll just throw him in there. And there's so many things that go into the running back position. But I think Nick McKissick, Luke, our, our running back coach, is doing a great job of, of, of coaching those guys, and even Xander Rockow, and, and even the running backs that are in the room, you know, Marquise and all those guys there. I mean, I mean, they're, they're young players. I mean, really young players. Um, but, again, you're going you're gonna to earn everything that you get, you know. And we've got some guys that just – it's like who do, you, who do you choose from, from the guys that are really inexperienced and definitely probably aren't ready to play, but who's going to get you through that game if that's what you get to. You have to be ready for that to you about the way Daniel Jackson's been able to ascend to wide receiver one here? I think he's grown up a lot. I think he's matured not only uh, as a person but on the field. His maturity level, doing what you have to do becomes doing what you want to do. I think he has a great understanding of that. I think he's really encompassed the whole position, not only just in the in the run game, run blocking, but from the break points uh, to he can play every position from the inside to the outside. He can run every route we have. Uh, and the competitiveness in him and the consistency of that has gone through the roof. He's always been a really competitive person, but there were times that it was consistent in his playmaking ability and sometimes it wasn't. But again, that's part of the youth and immaturity and inexperience. The more he's had and the more he's worked at it, the better he's gotten. You talk about one of the hardest workers on our team. He loves to practice. I mean, Daniel Jackson loves to compete. He loves to practice. And it's been fun to watch him develop. He's got a lot of work to do. Still got a lot of room for improvement. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of the progress he's made. You talk about kind of infusing confidence in guys. <clears throat> do you do that with Brevin with that 30-yard grab especially? Yeah, I mean, Brevin is a really good football player. And I think that, you know, you go through any, anybody's career, there's times where maybe they're not playing as well as they know they can play. And I think that's very transparent. That that's, happens to all of us. Sometimes we're really, we think we're a really good dad. Sometimes we think we're not a very good dad or a parent um, or, 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 you know, uh, a radio host or part of the media. Maybe our article was really good one time and it wasn't this time. Uh, it, it's part of life. You've got to be able to work through that. And I think Brevin's done a great job. Nobody's worked harder than Brevin. And you're talking about finding a way to get himself out of whatever he was in. And it wasn't anything that was one particular thing. It was just some inconsistency. Um, but I think this is a huge step forward for him. Uh, and it doesn't matter what year you are. Everybody just thinks, again, you just ascend. Everybody just thinks you start here and you end here. That's not how sports work. That's not how competitors work. That's not how growth works. You have to sometimes take two steps back to go three steps forward, maybe 10 steps back to go 11 steps forward. But he's played a lot of football. He's a very mature individual, and I'm really proud of the, the consistency he has shown to get himself out of whatever he was in. Uh, mentally, physically, emotionally, but he's never stopped being an elite teammate. Uh, he's never stopped being a great leader on this team, and he's just continued to work. And I'm glad he had the game he had because he had, he, had, he had a huge catch in that game. I mean, huge. And really blocked his tail end off. So um, took a huge step forward. Did it seem to you that uh, Devin Williams followed up his Iowa game with another good one? Yeah, I thought so. You know, I thought he did. You know, I, I think he's playing more consistent. Again, another young player probably playing before he should play. But when you're looking at what he's been able to do, the physical aspect when he first started was probably a little bit of an issue mixed in with the mental piece of that. But when you start to see him now, I mean, he's caught up on both of those uh, and he's playing really um, he's playing really confident, playing at a high level. Um, and you could just see he's one step ahead of where he was before. Uh, he's not thinking as much. Uh, he's just responding to everything he sees. And he's playing with a lot of confidence. And he's, he, he plays relentless, fearless. And um, 
he's just going to keep getting better and better as time goes on. What makes a Brett Bielema coach team tough to beat, and what would it mean to you to get to get a win over him? I know, I know you guys respect each other. Yeah, so I got a ton of respect for him. He's a good friend of mine. Um, you know, he's won everywhere he's been, and, you know, especially when you look at Illinois and their team, they're really tough. They take over his personality, and, you know, he's a really tough individual. Um, and you talk about they're hard-nosed, tough, they're going to run the football, they're going to stop the run. Uh, their defense, it, it seems simplistic. It's very, very complicated. They got some of the best players in the league on their defense. And you can go across their front seven and, and, and find probably two of the four, or two of the best defensive linemen um, in, the, in the conference right there in Illinois. Um, and their offense, I mean, their quarterback's dual threat. Uh, they got wide outs that can really make plays. They got a stable of running backs. Their offensive line's huge. Their tackles are really, really good. Uh, tight ends are consistent. Um, they're just very disciplined. They're a very disciplined team. They're very tough. They play great defense. They don't beat themselves. And uh, that's a typically typical coach, uh, Bielema team. So uh, very good football coach, very good team. Very good team coming in here. Uh, you talked about going back to Sean Tyler at some point. You still have confidence in him. How do you do that kind of coming out of Saturday? Yeah, I mean, you, you go back out to practice and you give him more carries. You know, it's like it's like watching the movie Top Gun. You know, get Maverick back up in the air and get him flying again. Give him the ball again. Um, you know, you just can't put the ball on the ground. He understands that. It's not like, Coach, why, I'm, you know, why didn't you put me back in there? Those are tough decisions that you have to make. But, uh, you know, we got to coach it better. We got to get him to do it better because uh, he's a really, t really good player, really talented. He's played a lot of football. Uh, but the ball is a premium. Ball is a program. And he knows that. And it's one thing to, to know – or wonder why maybe I'm not getting the more reps. It's it's another thing to know exactly why. Because if you know exactly why, you can fix that. You can make that better. And there's nothing telling me, uh, you know, Sean won't make that better. And uh, you know, he was back at practice yesterday, working on everything he can to make it better. And I I, I appreciate that a lot because uh, we got to coach it better, and um, you know, we got to take care of the ball. Two months of Sunday night scrimmages. Who are the, some of the players that have stood out to you that have been on scout team? Uh, a lot of guys. I think uh, Kendrick Lanier had a really good night last night. Uh, Xander Rockow. I think uh, you know Marcus Hendrickson is actually picks the players of the game. Our director of uh, uh, player personnel. So we kind of give him the GM trophy to be able to hand out. And uh, Xander won it yesterday, but he could have picked a lot of people. Kerry Brown, one of our safeties, um, he had a pick yesterday and had a great return on it. Um, those are some guys that have, have really stood out. Um, you know, uh, TJ, one of our wideouts, um, Nuke, one of our wideouts. But you look at like uh, a Martin Owusu, and you start to look at some guys on, on that side of the ball. I mean, on the defensive side of the ball, they're, I mean, I, I can go down a lot of our freshmen because I like our young class. Um, it's interesting because we have some guys that have played a lot of football, and then we have guys that are just all young. It's amazing. There's not, that, there's not a lot of that middle ground right now on this football team. So it, it's interesting. It seems like everybody that you see is just young, and they're going to be around a long time. You know, we don't lose a lot of players after this year. So um, the development of those guys is critical on Sundays. He's wondering about. Where's he at? Was, was he wondering where he's at? Vikings. So he. Oh, that's. <clears throat> I get it. So I guess I have something coming up that's pretty important. So. So he, he, he wanted sure. me to ask a question about kind of the Big Ten allowing night games throughout November and kind of how you view that. Uh, I'm not one of those coaches that ever really – I don't want to say I don't care because it sounds in, uh, insincere, but I really don't. Like, we'll play whenever. I mean, we don't have any control of the schedule or what we do or how we do it or any other reason of why people are doing it. So I tend to spend my energy on things I can control. And uh, they give us a time, we'll play. Six in the morning, we'll play. Six at night, we'll play. So, I'm not one that really has a comment on that because I think you know that's all that's all ran through TV and Big Ten and stuff like that. So I get all the reasons why, that's for sure. Because I know it's not just we all just think of what can serve our own program. And it's, I, I get that there's a massive business uh, aspect of that and the media business of that. Concerns just given the cold in Minnesota. You're asking the head football coach at the University of Minnesota about the weather. No, zero. <laughs> Not at all. No. This time of year, which Some of the games, the coldest games I've ever coached in, haven't even been here. So. 
Jordan, with the, with the time of the year and just the ability to establish the run game and run the ball 40 times with Newbin, just very success throughout multiple running backs. How impressed are you with the offensive line? Yeah, I'm really impressed with them. You know, I mean, obviously we could have played better, want to play better, uh, have to play better. Um, that's part of the change your best and chasing something, right? You always want to have something to chase. And our coaches do a really good job of making sure our players always have something to go out there and go chase and get better at. But I was really impressed with them. I thought our two tackles played really well. Nathan Bowe played really well. Um, I'm talking about competitive, firing off the ball, nasty play. Uh, love that. Um, you know, our guards, we've got to continue to get better. I mean, that was Greg's first, you know, start as a freshman. I mean, you don't really want to be playing offensive linemen as a freshman. But, again, this is part of how we run our program and culture and develop them. And there's no better time than the present to keep developing him. And Martez has gotten better. Just got to continue to be more consistent, um, you know, especially with Cooper out. So, um yeah, I was really impressed with them. We got to keep getting better, though, uh, as we go forward, which uh, I know we will. But that just shows. I mean, I'm not saying you can just throw anybody back there, because that takes that, that it takes away from the skill set of what our running backs have. But you look at us over the last three to four years and how many running backs we've actually played, right? And I'm talking significant time. I'm not talking about the end of the game. Just throw somebody in there. I'm talking significant starters playing, carries, touchdowns making a difference in the game. We got to get really creative really quick because you can't control that. Um, you, you really can't. I mean, you, you can't control, I mean, Muhammad getting hurt in 21. I mean, it just happened, you know, to, it happens all over the NFL. Happens all the time. I mean, it's just, it's part of the game, but you, ha you have to have a lot of backs. Some years you go through and you stay pretty healthy. Some years you go through and you lose a lot of guys. Um, you know, what, what Jordan did in the game doesn't shock me. The, the amount of carries at the end shocked me. Um, because I was like, 40 key, you actually carried the ball 40 times? Um, that, because you're not, you're not really worried about the pitch count at that particular point uh, of the game, especially when, you know, we put the ball on the ground and we had five empty possessions. Uh, but I thought he handled it really well. And the reason a guy like that can handle it really well and people can handle those things really well is because of how hard they work in the weight room um, with the strength and conditioning team, uh, with our nutritionist, Rachel, and what she's done. Uh, JoJo's a, one of the hardest workers on our team. He's a quad team member on special teams. He does everything in practice. Probably runs more than most guys in practice before he even became a running back for us. Uh, that needed significant time. But it just shows, and I'll, I'll leave it at this, is that no matter what position you're talking about, I said this in my post-game press conference, you know, and I said that to all the youngsters out there, that – most of the time, we always get what we ask for, 90% of the time. Now, it might not be exactly what you ask, but it's close. You get it. But then when you get it, what are you going to do with it? Because if you're not ready with it, right, when it comes and you complain, right, uh, you blame and you deflect, then it's going to fizzle away and you'll never have another opportunity to do it. And then you'll blame everybody else why you didn't do it. Uh, that's human nature. That's what happens. You'll blame somebody else why you're not where you're supposed to be. But you weren't ready for your opportunity. You didn't take advantage of that. JoJo is ready for his opportunity. And I'm not sitting here anointing him as the best running back in the country right now. But he was ready for his opportunity. And when he had it, he ran with it. And now he's going to gain another opportunity. Because if you're not ready for it, and just because you're the next guy doesn't mean you're going to keep your job. And I think that's how a lot of people think, oh, I'm just, I'm the next one. Well, when you get to the next one, okay. Well, if you're not the one that earned that next spot, you won't be the next one. And that's, that's life. Those are life lessons that you can teach in football. And um, there's a lot of people out there that blame, complain, and deflect uh, of why they're not somewhere. Uh, but when they had their opportunity, they didn't, they didn't want it and didn't take advantage of it. But it came. They just didn't want it. Circumstances, you talked about kind of being surprised by the number 40 for his carries. After Ethan throws an interception, I think you guys ran it 19 times, a couple kneel downs. Was that just kind of – how the game played out, or what kind of was the philosophy as you guys went with that? Well, I mean, I, I think Ethan want that throw back. I mean, he actually threw it to the right person, just didn't throw the right ball, and he's learned a lot from that. Again, he's going to keep learning because if he throws the right ball there, we're going to have a touchdown. Um, and that's the thing he just has to learn from. we got to coach it better. But it, those are the things that once he gets it, he's going to be really, really good, right? Uh, sometimes you just got to go through that. But after that – uh, I thought we did a really good job of, of wearing down, uh, you know, the front seven. And at that point, those 
three to four yard carries were becoming more six, seven, eight yard carries. And once that starts happening, you know me, that's just we're going to keep it on the ground, make the game shorter. Uh, and then sooner or later, those seven, eight yarders, we break a tackle and now it's a touchdown. You know, you get a good block on the outside or you get another 12 yard run. Um, and it can set up some more of the play action as well. So um, we felt like we needed to keep that clock moving. We felt like we could run the football and, and why not? It, it worked out really well for us. You got everybody. Have a safe, happy Halloween. Roll the boat, Sky, my Gophers.